wrote this book because when I bought a horse at age 45, I thought I knew what to expect. And some of the answers this horse helped me find were, well, a little bit surprising. When I learned that more than 75% of the horses in America today are owned by women over 40, I realized I wasn't alone in pursuing this old dream. Well, I think a lot of women, you know, they had that childhood dream of having their horse and, and you know, riding off into the sunset. And we all, you know, most little girls dream of having their own horse. And when they're 40, they, they realize it's kind of now or never. And it's a, it's a very good way to build confidence and to really achieve some of your dreams, but sharing it with, with something else, with an animal. After talking to dozens and dozens of women my age and older also traveling this midlife horse trail, I realized that what we want and need from horses at this time of life is very different from anything we've ever considered before. And if we do this thing right, it can be far more rewarding than we ever imagined. I can come, I can have the worst day, just rotten, angry, upset, I, you know, and I will come out here and visit my horse and I'd, I don't know, he has that effect on me. I leave here and I'm calm quiet, not even driving the speed limit, you know, just relax, it, it's, it's, I can't explain it, it's just a great, it just, he does something for me. It gives me a goal and a great deal of satisfaction to be able to come out here and perform and complete the task that I've been practicing so hard to, to learn and to perfect. Keep me smiling. I'm on the back of a horse, I smile. Makes me happy. I mean, how can you not love a horse? And, you know, I pass this field every morning on my way to work, and I just, I don't know, I see the horses out in the morning, in the summer, and the frost, and just, I don't know. I, it, horses of all kinds, all colors, shapes, sizes, and they just, I don't know, made me smile, and I, I wanted one. When my mom says the third word I ever spoke was horse, besides mom and dad, she said I've always loved them, always had an affinity for them. I was a horse crazy young lady. And as I became an adult and had more free time, I thought what makes me happy? What really do I enjoy? Horses. So I started pursuing it again. I grew up in the country and I started, my mother started putting me on the pony. <laughs> when I was six months old, and she would trot beside me, and she said she, I would scream every time they took me off. And I still feel that way. <laughs> I just love to be with them. It is uh, so important to my life. Uh, and almost all of us, at one time or another, dreamed of having a horse of our own. And now, in record numbers, we're making that dream come true. And um, I would go to the parade every Christmas, and most of the kids couldn't wait for Santa Claus, and I didn't care about him. It was all about the horses, and it was a dream come true. I'll be 50 next month, and I, my dream was to have a horse before I was 50, and I've had Zeke for a year on November 5th. Well, my father went to his place for Christmas one year. I was 35 years old. And he had this pony, this blonde-haired, blue-eyed pony, and he said, do you want this pony? I said, let me think about it. Three months later, I went and got her. <laughs> Six horses later, I still have her. I'm 40. I have had a horse for, it'll be a year in December. I got him for, as a surprise for my birthday last year for my husband. I've had a connection with the horses since I was probably two and always knew I wanted one, always knew I wanted to ride. Got my first one when I was actually 26. So here we are, nearly 7 million women across America, all in various stages of learning and relearning and redefining this old dream we all share. And we also share many of the same issues concerns, and stories surrounding our experience of midlife horses. When, when the kids were at home, you know, if I was ever cranky or not in the greatest of moods, or what, I mean, everybody's comment was, go to the barn. We think you need barn time. <laughs> oh, um, well, I'll quote my daughter who always tells my son, it's okay if she's crabby, she's going to go ride. She'll be better when she gets back. 
Well, you know, it's the thing that I feel like that I do for myself. That that's the thing that, you know, makes you free your mind and you just get to do something different. And I feel like it's just something for myself, not for anyone else. Gosh, I think I've been around them for so long, they're just sort of part of life. There's not so much a drive necessarily, I guess just, they're just fun to be around. Exploring this a little bit further, I discovered that the common bond of midlife horses crisscrosses all levels of rider, all breeds, all kinds of people, and all kinds of horses. It even includes plenty of grounded horse enthusiasts who either can't ride or don't want to, but still understand the impact a horse can have on our life. Regardless of what we do with this experience, having a horse in the middle of our life can make the difference we've all been looking for. <sighs> Keeps me going. With God, country, my horse, and my dog, I'm okay. And they make me very happy. I love it. I've been doing it since I was, uh, as long as I can remember. It's just in my blood. <laughs> then he'd have to do lots of videos so when I'm unable to ride anymore, at least I can watch the horses. I, I think it would be hard. I think it would be a void that would be very hard to fill. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. Because I needed so much to have, to have the riding. So what draws us back to our dreams of horses? What can horses do for us at this time in our life? What do we really want from our midlife horses? And how can we be sure we get it? I wrote the Smart Woman's Guide to Midlife Horses to help answer these questions and more. It's a little bit resource, a little bit guidebook, and I hope a whole lot of motivation for anyone who'd like to join this wonderful journey. With the help of a few stories and some special insights from women who have ridden this trail ahead of us, I think this book brings together what a lot of us would like to know about the life-changing decision to add a horse to part two of our lives. Well, I think Winston Churchill said it best. There's nothing better for the inside of a man than the outside of a horse. And I guess we can update that now to include women, but he got it spot on. <laughs>